to Turtle Power. This is the new logo for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie that's coming out in 2023, executive produced by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, who, of course, did Pineapple Express. And when you think of that movie, you think of Superbad and you think of Ninja Turtles as well. But the big news of the day, aside from this being released um, a week, I think it's a week earlier than projected. They were like, no, you know what? We've got something here. It's going to be a week earlier in August, which I like. August works for Ninja Turtles. It worked for the Michael Bay first movie. They went with June for the sequel. It didn't work out so well, even though you and I are huge fans of that movie. But they went for it here. Um, Mr. Reds is saying this is bitching. I totally agree. Yeah, that's a nice welcome. I told you it's like, don't get excited. But it is, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's not like in your face. It's very perfectly subtle. It's exactly what you want it to be. It's reminiscent of the old red one from from the uh, 80s comic run, which I have those here. Anyway, somewhere. Um, but any, but the, the big news, Andrew, aside from, from this, is that Paramount Plus is like, and then you're going to get movies specifically based on Ninja Turtle villains on Paramount Plus to follow. So it's kind of like they're doing like some weird shared universe, but it's the villain shared universe because the heroes are, they're heroes in a half shell. We already got them. So you hear that news, Fantasia. What excites you? What maybe makes you hesitant? And what villains are you hoping to see on the Ninja Turtle Paramount Plus movies? Don't forget, each movie is a villain. Yeah. This is a weird story because there's there's this Seth Rogen movie. And there's also, there's a second movie. And I keep hearing one is live action and one is animated. And I don't know which is which. So the Colin Jost one, and he's running with his brother, apparently, from Saturday Night Live. That one, I haven't heard anything of that. So we're not talking. So that one's like on the back burner. I don't know what's going on. But the Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg one, which is happening, which is coming out on November, or November, in August 2023 is animated and these side stories will also be animated films as well okay all right so if we're just talking animated then um see this is tricky man this is really tricky you and i both got really excited when out of the shadows came out uh Mm -hmm. because it came the closest to giving us what every child in north america in the year 1990 wanted to see um and i feel like I don't mean to be that guy who dumps on animated films because you know I love them. I'm I'm not I don't have that bias anywhere in my body, but this just by the fact that it's animated, it can't be that movie. It can't be that 1990 movie that we all wanted. It just agreed. It, um that doesn't mean it it can't be good. I'm sure it will be awesome. I'm sure uh, I mean Seth and Evan are two very funny dudes. I'm sure they can come up with some really good stuff to do with these turtles. But, okay, what can you tell, what story can you tell in this movie that's different enough from the 2009 movie, the TMNT one, that it stands on its own, um, but can also uh, sort of bring the turtle world into a place where you want to see all these spinoffs? You know, what's it going to do to make some kid who's never heard of Baxter Stockman excited about the possibility of seeing a Baxter Stockman movie. And Vermont, you're right. If there's no ice and there's no partners in crime, who the hell is scoring this picture? Because what's the point? I'm with you, Andrew. I want live action. I I was a kid in the eighties. I used to watch the cartoon and when the live action movie came out, it was, it's something different, right? It's adult. It's like, Oh, it's real. This is something real that you can have. The, the problem is, you know, you look at the Michael Bay one, like them or not. I mean, it's a, pretty much a, it's Roger Rabbit, right? It's, it's a cartoon in real world. So what's the difference almost? You could do more with animation, but it won't have that feeling. The legitimateness uh, of, of the live action. <clears throat> and I, I think about this all the time with like Spider-Man and even Batman, where you have Into the Spider-Verse and Mask of the Phantasm, which could you could argue are the strongest movies of any of of both of those characters, but they're animated. So they're always left. They're not at the forefront of the conversation of the mind, right? Like no way's home is always going to be superior to into the spider verse because it is live action. And it's part of this big thing. There's something special about live action. That being said, if we're going to get it, we're going to get, I like the TMNT movie, 
I, I, I always liked your idea. Like, continue the turtle movie, but le- keep them like the burden uh, Batman films and keep them in like the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Keep them contained in that timeline. Yeah, and, keep and New keep- York looking gritty and dangerous. Exactly, keep it in that. And I think that would be more effective. But we're going to get this cartoon. I would like to see the Rat King. As as a as a Paramount Plus show, there's a few though. There's Tiger Claw, but Shredder. The one thing with the Bay movies is they botched Shredder so hard on the first one, and then they kind of retconned him in the second. Well, they retconned him during the first one, and <laughs> they just they botched him. Hard. Like I think they I think they were going in like an an intriguing direction with the Shredder, and then and then the internet kind of found out about it. And they're like, whoa, what? No, and then they they tried to retcon their own movie while they were making it and they didn't do a good job i don't think of that and then the sequel they just kind of were like ah don't worry about it it's a shredder but the, the one thing with the shredder though that the the 90 movie did so well was his relationship with splinter and splinter's master and you go back and there's a and i don't know if this works in animation this is the thing though for paramount plus but that story is exciting and intriguing and it has a lot there's a lot there and a lot of lore that you can expand on also going back there and obviously um you know he's gonna show up yeah and that's the thing for me is if if there's one thing that no turtles movie live action or not has done yet it's probably my favorite aspect of the 90s cartoon which is the relationship between Shredder, Krang, Bebop, and Rocksteady and how they are this dysfunctional family who lives together in this giant metal ball and they all hate each other and they're all very mean and cruel and Krang is like, pick up that computer, Shredder. Oh, don't tell me what to do. And they they just, you, you can watch them for hours and you don't even need to look at the turtles because there's so much entertaining stuff happening here. Uh, I feel like somewhere down the line when it comes to big properties like this we lost the concept of villains having a sense of humor and it's sad because yeah. i i miss that being a thing uh so i hope that one of these movies one of these 14 movies paramount has in the pipeline uh recreates that relationship in a fun way because that was that was half the fun of watching that cartoon. Like, yeah, I'm getting the turtles, but I know I'm going to see Shredder and Krang and they're going to smack talk each other. And it's going to be great. Yeah. And it's something that you can, like you said, King kids cling to that, but I, I don't, I villains as a whole have just lost their way. And, I, and you like the MCU is a prime example of it where there's like what three memorable villains in, in the MCU. Yeah. Like there's not many, there's not a lot. They're all, and the first five, six, seven years, they were all the, they've all been the same, right? They're like, basically it's the good guy, uh, but he's using the powers for bad. You know, it's like Iron Man is uh, Jeremiah. What's his name? Whatever. <laughs> he's just got an Iron Man suit. Ant-Man is just, he's got an Ant-Man suit. Like they're all, and I love those, like those movies are great, but like the villains are just forgettable. They're there because they have to be there. And I think what I like about this Paramount Plus thing that they're, they're offering us is these villains are going to have personalities and they're going to have to have personalities. And Baxter Stockman by Tyler Perry in Out of the Shadows <clears throat> is an all-time great performance. I don't care who you are. Yes, he is. I don't care. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm.